Good morning, everybody. How is your morning so far? How is your Tuesday so far? My name is Ali Board, Alison C. Board, and you are very welcome to my live broadcast for Technique Tuesday. Now I say live, and I know you lovely people that tune in every week have heard me say this lots of times, but I am going to say it one more time just for good luck. You might be watching this live on Facebook. You might be watching it on Catch Up on Facebook or on YouTube or via my blog. Blog. However it is that you are watching it and however you are interacting with what I do this morning, thank you very much for tuning in. Now Technique Tuesday, it's uh, something that I've done since the beginning of lockdown in the UK. It actually predates lockdown. I used to do it so that I recorded something to go out every Tuesday morning at 10 o'clock. But since the beginning of lockdown, I've been broadcasting live for as many Tuesdays as my schedule allows. And we have been working on on a daffodil painting. There's lots of information that I need to give you uh, today. But if you are watching this live and you are in the chat, please do free, feel free to say hello. My apologies in advance if I miss you saying hello. I will try and give as many people a shout out as possible. So let's see uh, who's in the room and who I can say good morning to. Uh, B, uh, Rosie, <laughs> just in case you don't know what Rosie is talking about, She's referring to my live broadcast for Artist Demo Days yesterday. Uh, Julie, it's rainy in Dorset too. It's rainy in Suffolk, I see. Geraldine, uh, Pat, Pam, Sally, Jeanette, Pauline, uh, Ruth, Rabina, Kathy, Heather, Jill, uh, Mary, Patricia, Anne, Linda, Hilary, gosh, there's lots of you this morning. Uh, Joy, Joe, um, Thyra, Jan, Christopher. Oh, you're very welcome, Christopher. Uh, Jilly, Christine, Linda P. Uh, Oh, I'm going to pronounce your name wrong. Um, is it Silka in Australia? Uh, good evening over there. My apologies if I have um, pronounced your name wrong. Uh, Debbie, Helen, uh, Valerie, uh, Julie. Uh, what, who else we got? Mick's in the room. Morning, Mick. Uh, <laughs> Mick is pondering this morning. Uh, Martina, Sandy, uh, Kareen, Susan, Cheryl, Liz, Joanna. Uh, who else we got? Oh, they're coming in thick and fast. Uh, Anne. Good morning, Anne. Uh, Diane, Lynn, Anne B, Janet, <laughs> Janet is saying blooming rain, mm. uh, Barbara, Janice, uh, Rosemary, uh, Chris, uh, Chris is said, <laughs> uh, has been removing mud from a Jack Russell. Yes, my husband is actually currently doing the same. Uh, Mavis, uh, Roger and Chris. Good morning. Christine is here as well. Good morning. You are all astonishingly welcome. Thank you ever so much for tuning in. So morning, Wendy. Let's give you, uh, morning Andrea, let's give you the, the backstory on what it is that we've been doing. So I decided to do a daffodil painting um, after a request to do one and I asked you what materials you would like to see and so, so far we have covered uh, drawing and, and how to kind of refine your drawing. We've covered oil pastel, we've done a bit of brusho, we've done some watercolour techniques and we've done a little bit of gouache and today is the day that I am going to finish my painting but much more importantly than that. Um, we have had occasion in our family to need to support the Marie Curie cancer care nurses and actually today is more important than it ever has been. So I would like to auction this daffodil painting. You're going to see the link for the auction all over social media in the coming days but there are two really quick places that you can go to. If you go into the description for today's Facebook broadcast you will see the link that's on there. You can click it and you can go straight to it. Also, on the blog, you know that after the broadcast, I archive it over on my website, www.alisonseaboard-fineart.co.uk. Go to Ali's blog and right there at the top of the page, um, this week's blog post 
in extremely large letters at the top is the link that you can click on. Now, there were lots of ways that I could have done this auction, but I wanted you to feel safe and secure with any bids that you might place and to know that it is all above board. I know that seems a bit daft because I'm pretty sure you know that I wouldn't do anything untoward with it, but I wanted you to be absolutely assured that I was doing it through proper channels. So I've actually used an auction site to be able to do this. It does mean you need to register on that auction site if you place a bid but it's for your security I promise it's nothing to do with me it's so that you know that if you place a bid I have to follow through and donate the money to where I said I was going to donate it so please do go over there uh, when the broadcast is over and click your click on the auction there is a small reserve it's only a small reserve just simply because I have um, an amount of money in mind that I would like to donate so so please don't worry if your bid uh, doesn't quite make it and you've got all week. It doesn't run out until next Wednesday. So I hope that makes sense. If you have any questions about it, please do pop them into the chat or go over onto the blog and stick it into the comments. And I promise that I will return to those questions and I will answer them for you. Now, I have some more good mornings to say. Anne is saying another Anne. What did we call them? Yes, an anarchy of Anne's. Uh, Barbara, good morning. Ali D, good morning. Um, oh, yes, the an the anarchy of Anne's is in the room. <laughs> uh, Rona, good morning. Gwenda, Janice uh, and Tony, good morning to everybody there. Now, not only do you have the opportunity to bid on the painting in order for us to raise as much as we can for Marie Curie, um, but you also have the option, and you can probably see it on the screen right Right now I'm asking you what a subject you would like to tackle next because by the end of today's broadcast I will have finished my uh, daffodil painting and don't worry I will get to it any minute now but on there is a little poll and I have said what subject would you like to see Ali tackle next and I've said animal landscape architecture or still life you don't need to put it in the comments just tap on one of those options and uh, it will mean that I can see what subject you would like me to tackle and that's the one I will be doing for Technique Tuesday next week and I'm going to do the same I'm going to slow the process right down I'm going to go through the project from start to finish we'll go back to the beginning again we'll talk about those drawing techniques because they're going to be slightly different drawing techniques for the subject that I tackle I'll find you a piece of reference material that you will be able to download and then you can follow along at home um, I love Julie has just gone chickens <laughs> <laughs> don't need to ask me twice to do more chickens julie um morning cotswold claire <laughs> thank you very much for tuning in so shall i take you to the overhead camera so that you can see the story so far so here is the painting that we have been tackling we uh like i said we drew it out we laid down some oil pastel to act as a resist don't forget if you haven't caught up with this painting yet, there's not a problem. You can go back over to my blog and you can watch all of the broadcasts back again. Or if in a couple, if you don't fancy doing a, da a daffodil, nearly said dandelion, if you don't fancy doing a daffodil, then, um, but you think, oh, that might be something I want to do in the future, then you know you can always find it on the blog. So we laid down some oil pastel, which uh, you'll be able to see in there, acted as a bit of a resist. Then we... I'm going to say attacked it with brusho. Morning, Rachel, my lovely. Um, we sprinkled some of that lovely gamboge brusho into the background. We talked about moon glow watercolour paint at length, didn't we? And we popped that into the background. Then we uh, blocked it in with some of our watercolours. We talked about shadows, which I think was an element that a lot of you found very useful last week. And then we did add a little bit of gouache in the end. Now, it does need refining and it does need finishing. First thing I'm going to do is uh, take you to close-up cam so that you can see some of those details um, before I do anything else to them. So you can probably see there a bit of the, uh, the wax resist. You can certainly see the depth of the shadows and you can certainly see that brusho just peeking out from underneath and giving our painting a little bit of drama, a little bit of excitement and certainly some personality. 
So what we need to talk about this week is how we are going to be finishing these off and the things that we can do to get them to a slightly crisper conclusion. Sally is saying, today is finally the day I can begin my daffodil better late than never. That's the thing, Sally, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter when you access these things. Do it in your own time. Ali WT is uh, saying that she loves a good chicken. Definitely going through a chicken phase at the moment. Her, chi her kitchen is full of them, but not real ones. Uh, Kate is saying, uh, good morning. And uh, yes, Kate, if you go over to my YouTube channel, I do talk about uh, ruling pens and thank you very much for inadvertently allowing me to mention my YouTube channel. Just uh, put my name into the search bar um, and you should be able to find a ruling pen tutorial on there. Right, let's get cracking with this. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the masking tape from around the edge. Why am I doing this first? I'm doing it first because it's going to be a little bit of a struggle to see where my highlights need to be because I'm slightly blindsided by the fact that we've got this brown tape on here. So that's the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna carefully peel away this uh, masking tape. Now, the one thing I'm gonna make absolutely sure of because I am pushing my luck with the fact that this masking tape has been down on this piece of watercolor paper for four weeks now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that I peel my tape away, A, very slowly, and B, at a 90 degree angle away from my picture. Because then that way, if the paper does tear, if the masking tape takes a little bit of the surface away, it will rip away from my painting rather than into my painting. So nice and slowly, I'm gonna peel that away. I can see there is a little bit of uh, watercolor paper that has come with it. So there's the first bit, let's roll that up into a ball. My um, sincere apologies if you can hear the nightmarish Jack Russells in the background, a delivery man has just popped up at the front door. So because they think that that delivery man is going to kill me at any opportunity, <laughs> they try to let me know about it. There we go, that one came off a little bit easier. Let's do the top one. I'm a bit concerned about the top one because that one got quite wet uh, when I was putting the background on, so I'm being super careful with that. So let's peel that away. Actually, that wasn't too bad at all. And then down here, let's do the last one, the bottom one, and peel that away. Ooh, that is a tough one. I can feel that there's quite a bit of resistance going on there. You can see that I'm holding the paper down at the same time as peeling it away really, really slowly. And there you go. Can you see the difference that makes? I've got that lovely crisp white border. Now, if I was going to mount this, I could choose to whether my mount comes right up to the edge of this or whether I actually left a cheeky little gap between where the mount stops and the painting starts. So you've got a lovely bit of white watercolour paper going on around the edge. Whoever wins this painting in the auction, I am going to mount it up for you so that it is ready for you to frame. And I'll make the decision about that probably uh, when I do it. Mick is saying, could you use a hairdryer heat gun on the tape to soften the glue and make it easier to remove? Yes, you absolutely can, Mick. It, thank you for asking that question. It does depend on the brand of tape as to whether that works or not because sometimes it does make it a little bit worse so um, if you use the same brand of tape over and over again what I would actually do is uh, not only stick it around the edge but put an extra little bit of uh, tape down there and then you can peel that off and you can see how it's going and yes you can use the heat gun just to uh, melt it a little bit my only issue with using the heat gun on the tape to remove it is that sometimes you can end up with leaving a little bit of residue of the tape behind and then when you go back into working it or any of those other things that glue will then pick up dirt or anything else that you're adding to it so it, it's just one of those things that you have to call it as you see it when you are completing your own painting
So there we go. Yeah, uh, Jean, it really, really does make a difference, doesn't it? That all of a sudden, rather than having that brown border, it kind of pings back to life again. And you get that beautiful white paper, in this case, the Saunders Waterford, popping through. So without further ado, let's introduce you to the product that I'm going to be using to complete my daffodil. And it's these. Now you don't have to do this. This is not compulsory, just like the rest of the project. It really doesn't matter whether you have these or not, or you have an alternative, or you want to finish it off with gouache, any of those type of things. I just particularly like using these pens. You'll see me use these an awful lot in my work. These are called Posca pens. So they're made by the Mitsubishi Pen Company. They're called Uni Posca, P-O-S-C-A, and they are in effect a paint marker. They go onto any surface, so they'll go onto plastic, metal, glass, stone, all sorts of things. And the reason that I like them, there's two reasons that I like them. The first is that um, they are water soluble when they are wet and waterproof when they are dry, so you can layer them up really easily. And it means that if I put a really dark color down, I let it dry, and then I wanted to cover it up, I could do that with a paler color. It will do those things. And the second reason that I like them is Posca do produce a, a range of colors that are useful. And that's really important, isn't it, in painting? A lot of the time in paint markers, felt tip pens and similar you get some really garish colors and Posca have thought it through a little bit and they've gone actually artists designers graffiti artists all of those kind of things they want more subtle colors now there are several nibs you can get really ultra fine ones you can get really thick poster markers but actually um, this is the size this is one of the two sizes that I use an awful lot and it is a 0.7 millimeter. The code for the pen is PC1M. And what I will do in a minute is I will get close up camera on it so that you can see what the nib looks like. Now I've got two yellows here. You do need to uh, shake them to activate them. Glasses on, Ali. Um, you do need to, <laughs> grubby glasses apparently, I'm looking at things in a fog. Um, you do need to activate them. So over here on my piece of paper, I'm going to pump the tip ever so slightly to make sure that that uh, colour starts floating. And you can probably hear the ball bearing that's in it, which mixes up the uh, pigment in the paint with the binder. And then what I've got, so that is straw yellow there. I think that's going to be a rather useful colour. This one is just called yellow. Let's give that a shake. Uh, let's see how that one's coming out. Probably do with a little bit of an extra. There we go. That's a, a nice useful one. They might look a bit similar in the camera, but uh, one is deeper than the other. Then I've got some gold. What's not to like about that? Um, so I've got some gold. So that functions both as a deeper yellow and also as a little bit of a metallic. So let's get that one going. Hmm, that one is being a little bit naughty this morning. There we go, let's try that again. Oh, decided, it. oh, there we go, it's working now. Sometimes you have to persuade them to do the thing that you want them to do. And then I've got two greys, which are gonna be terribly useful uh, for my shadows. You don't need to have all these colors. I'm just doing it to, sh to show you what it is that I use and to introduce the product to you. Now this one is called uh, grey, funnily enough. I don't think I shook that one enough. Ooh, let's go. Uh, oh, is it getting there? Come on, these are probably running out. I use them so much, actually. I could probably do with getting some new ones. Come on, Mr. Grey Pen. There we go, that's better. And then this one is called Slate Grey. This is a colour I use an awful lot for shading and shadows. Yeah, there we go. Now, what I can do is show you why I love them so much. That Slate Grey that I just put down, I'm going to take a damp brush to it. And I'm going to move it and you can see that the color blends out. So like I said, 
water soluble when they're wet but waterproof when they're dry Jilly is asking are there any alternatives if you haven't got posca um you could use any sort of pen to be honest Jilly. you could use a waterproof one you could use a water soluble one my absolute suggestion is that you go through all the pens that you have and see what you've got it's a useful exercise to do in terms of knowing your materials anyway um you could of course you could finish it with the gouache like we spoke about last week, it's uh, you could mix your gouache in with a colour, you can use gouache on its own, you don't have to finish it off in pens, you can do whatever you like, it's your painting. Um, Joy is asking, are they all 0.7? Yes, they're all the PC1M, these, um, but that's not the only size in the brand that is Posca. There's uh, one that's much finer, there's a brush nib, and there's at least four or five thicker than this one. This is just the one that I thought would be useful to use today. Now, I've got to be careful with the refinements that I do because I don't want to overdo it. I've got the painting this far, so all I'm really going to do is sharpen some of the edges. Now, to do that, let's uh, get close-up camera in on the gig and let's switch to it so that you can see what I'm doing in close-up. So there are parts of it that I need to sharpen. I need to sharpen this edge a little bit. I want to put a little tiny bit of detail back into it. I want to sharpen up some of the other parts of it, but I'm gonna try really hard not to overdo it. So I'm gonna start probably with the gold, I think. Mm, do I want the gold or do I want that kind of nice strong yellow? You think I'd have decided this ahead of the demo, wouldn't you? But I really haven't. Um, so here we go so there's the nib of it you can see that it's kind of wider at the base narrow at the tip and uh, it's going to do the the job of tidying up really neatly and you will see straight away how it goes over the top of anything else you have put down and then I can take my damp brush so this is uh, an imitation sable size 4 and I can blend it into its surroundings and then that way I can be doing a little bit of tweaking. This is not faffing, you understand. This is tweaking. I know that that's semantics, but it's tweaking in my book and it's my painting, so I say so. <laughs> I'm in that sort of mood this morning, as you can tell. Uh, so I'm working my way back through various elements, adding a little bit of yellow here and there. I certainly need to work on uh, some of this yellow that is uh, up here, but I probably hmm, probably need to work with the grey on that as well. But I do need a little bit of extra oomphy yellow. Again, very technical uh, jargon this morning. Back over here on the kind of the crinkly edge of that trumpet. And I need to add a little bit of yellow uh, to the base too. So you can see what I'm saying about the colours being so useful. They're not too garish, they're sort of, they're not too bright, they're not going to stick out like a sore thumb on your painting. They're going to enhance it and make it all the better. Now, let's have a look at this crinkly edge over here because I'm not wild about how it's not uh, kind of standing out. So I'm going to do some negative work. So I'm going to work in between some of the petals with that grey to smudge that grey along. So can you see how straight away that crinkle is now starting to stand out a little bit more? Let's do some more around over here. So these are tiny tweaks tiny tiny tweaks the um, oil pastel is still doing a marvelous job of um, repelling things and uh, I need to pull a little bit of that away I want to make sure that you can uh, see this I'm just going to adjust the camera a little bit around there you go that's better and then uh, I can do a little bit more down here too getting the kind of edge in around on that crinkle so we're really refining our daffodils. I know that I've seen uh, some of you over on the Learning to Paint page have been getting really twitchy about the fact that you haven't wanted to race ahead with your paintings and have been itching to finish them. So you'll be glad to know that today is the day that you can go back into them 
and you can finish them a little bit more. Now, of course, the danger area is... <laughs> the danger area is that uh, you overdo it and I can see that already somebody in the chat who's that who said that uh, Chris <laughs> has said can you buy a fafometer I, I don't know but that is something I should be looking into isn't it <laughs> I definitely need one because you all think or I'm sure some of you think that because I talk about faffing all the time that I don't do it and that's quite the reverse quite the reverse. I am one of life's faffers and so I say it out loud in the vain attempt that I'm not going to be a massive hypocrite and do it myself. Uh, there we go. Yeah, Linda's saying the faffing police will be out to get me otherwise. So let's adjust uh, that camera angle again and let's put a little bit of that extra grey into the leading edge so that it doesn't look so disjointed from the rest of it. So we've got a little bit of grey back in there too. And you can see my little smudgy marks that I make. And also I'm going to use some of the grey pen over the top of the moon glow so that that front edge also starts to pop out. Now you could be working back in with a gold, you could be working back in with a gel pen, there are so many things that you could do with this. Just because I'm doing it this way does not make me right. In fact, quite the reverse. Go out there and prove otherwise. Prove that you can use other materials or other ways of doing something because then you will take ownership of the painting and then you will absolutely make it your own. Can you see what difference that, um, that made in putting that grey to the, the left of the trumpet? Very important. So we talked uh, quite extensively last week, didn't we, about balancing up those tones in the shadows and uh, this is why just sometimes you need that element of finishing it off before you do anything else. Now, um, let's take you back to the overhead camera so that you can see it in all its glory. Um, uh, here we got. Good morning, Joe. Uh, please don't apologise for being late. It's lovely that you're here. Right, here we go then. So uh, not too bad at all. It's kind of looking uh, like it's almost there. I do want to tidy up that stem um, because that's a bit scrappy up in there. And I think... Hmm, do I need to do anything else? Oh, yeah, I can spy something that I do want to work on. Where's the, is that the paler one? Is that the straw? Oh, I can never remember. Yes, that's the straw yellow. Um, I've got a bit of a dodgy old petal area going on up here, so I'm going to tidy that one up. Um, in actual fact, I'm going to shove my finger in it rather than blend it out. And over here at the back, I've got a bit of an untidy area too, so we'll do that. And then we will be very mindful of the fact that we don't want to start to faff it about. I always say, because lots of people say, well, how on earth am I supposed to know when I am faffing? I think you know when you're faffing. I think your little inner monologue says to you, uh, what are you doing that for? And it becomes kind of blindingly obvious that you are faffing. I always say that if you're making a mark for no good reason at all, if you're just doing it either because everybody else is still painting or you're doing it because you don't particularly want to stop and you don't particularly want to finish your piece, that is most definitely faffing. And so I am going to leave it there. I'm not going to do um, anything else to it. Um, I think I'm pretty happy with it. There is always that case, isn't there, that you need to kind of uh, leave a painting alone, stick it up on the side somewhere so that you can come back to it, make an assessment with fresh eyes, all of that kind of thing. Now, there is, uh, I know a lot of you ask me about signing paintings, okay? And here is my take on it, all right? This is only my take on it. You can take this piece of advice with a pinch of salt for every person that tells you to do it one way, there'll be another artist that tells you to do it differently. Now, lots of artists will say that um, they want their signature to be as small as possible, that they don't want it to detract from the picture. 
absolutely fine do that a lot of people um, sign along the contour of something or they'll kind of sign it up in one corner or some artists even sign the mount when that's on there I personally don't uh, kind of sign up for, if you pardon the pun, that school of thinking. I don't mind the fact that people uh, can see that I have painted this particular picture. And of course, because I'm a creative type, I do have quite a large signature. Um, <laughs> Rachel's saying that she'd be terrified at this stage of ruining what she'd already done. Yeah, I do. I do get that. No, Sandy, I'm not spattering this morning. I'm trying to not spatter. <laughs> so yeah it is uh and and signing it as well could also be something that scares you in case you get it you know on a, a jaunty angle that you didn't mean and all of those kind of things so this is the reason that i do what you're doing um ali d is asking you're not signing it before you photograph it are you if you are going to turn this into prints then yes you do need to photograph it now i can't photograph it at this stage because um the thing that i would use to photograph this is actually what's running the broadcast at the moment so uh, but i do did want to talk about signing it however Ali you will soon see why it's a reversible thing lots of artists will tell you don't sign your work in pencil because someone can rub it out well if someone wants to rub out your signature then good luck to them um, if they've purchased the painting from me and they want to pass it off as their own then you know so be it I like to sign my work in pencil because if I do stuff it up I can rub it out or um, if I kind of uh, if I decide like Ali is asking that, uh, you know, you want to sign it and then you suddenly go, oh, rats, I didn't uh, photograph it rather than going through the whole um, stressful scenario of trying to Photoshop that out. You can just rub it out and sign it again. So I sign in pencil. Also, there used to be an adage about you should sign your painting in the last colour that you use. That is an incredibly old oil painting a tradition because it used to be red. There's nothing particularly on here that means I want to sign it in red. I could sign it in purple, obviously, which is my signature colour. But I like signing it in pencil. And I'm going to let you into a massive secret, okay? And the secret that I'm going to let you into is one that you're not allowed to tell anybody, all right? You're not allowed to pass this on. I'm kidding, of course. Um, so uh, just before I, I impart the secret, Heather's asking, why would you not sign it before photo if it's to be a print? Because you don't particularly want your signature to be on a print. You want to be able to sign that print actually rather than it be a photographic reproduction of your signature so my limited edition prints i photograph it i have them printed um, as they are and then when they come into me i get a pencil or a gray pen and i sign them so that i can say that they're hand signed by the artist rather than it being a nasty reproduction it also means that in terms of uh, copyright or people trying to pass my work off as their own if I've hand signed my prints then it's really really obvious um, rather than that occurring somewhere online or somewhere on uh, one of those um, eastern sites where they rip off people's work all of that kind of thing um, and yes, also, Ali D makes the point that uh, you might not want your signature on a greetings card when it's kind of all reduced down. Although this is not this isn't a particularly big picture. Now, the big secret. Are you ready for this? I don't date my paintings when I sign them. OK, the reason that I don't date my paintings when I sign them is a controversial one. All right. When you put your work into an exhibition, uh, what tends to happen is that if a customer comes along and they see that you have signed a painting and it's uh, three or four years old, for some reason in the retail market of uh, contemporary work, if they think it is old work, they will probably pass it by. 
And so you could, of course, put the date in the year or however it is that you like to annotate it. And then if the painting doesn't sell, then, you know, you can rub the date out. I just don't put the date on them. And then it's entirely up to people to uh, interpret when I did it and how I did it. Now, of course, we've made this uh, a broadcast. So it's going to be really, really obvious as to what date it is. And if you're really worried about that, then you can always put the date on the back or you can write uh, other notes on the back. But also, I, I don't, as much as I say that I don't mind my signature showing, I don't particularly like the date showing either or the year or all of those kind of things, unless you're doing it for posterity or you're doing it as part of a journal entry or any of those kind of things. If this is something that I am potentially going to frame and sell, it just has my signature and uh, then it doesn't matter. It is certainly an original. So there we go. There is the completed daffodil painting <clears throat> I do hope you enjoyed that now please don't disappear yet because I have things to tell you I know this is uh, the point where people start going oh yeah that's good she's finished right fantastic bye 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 uh, but I have stuff to tell you don't go yet don't go yet now if you would like to bid on this painting if you would like to own this and you and I have a conversation about how I can get it to you it doesn't matter where in the world you are don't think it's only open to UK bidders it's really not I will part I will um, post it out to wherever you are in the world and your bid money a hundred percent of the winning bid is going to Marie Curie. I will absorb the cost of postage um, because I really want that money to go straight to the Marie Curie Cancer Care Charity. If you want to bid on that, there is a link in the description of this broadcast, which you can click on. Or if you go over to Ali's blog on my website, the link is right there at the top of the page. I put the blog post out. I haven't even finished the blog post yet, but I wanted that link to go on there. Now, because it's being done through an official auction site, it does mean that you need to register. And all that means is so that the auction site knows Know that you're a real human being so that you can trace your bid so that you know it's going through secure processing rather than us just doing it on social media and people knowing what you've bid and all of that kind of stuff so I've done it through an official app so that both you and I can be safe in the knowledge it's all going to be safe so I hope that makes sense right Let's just answer a few questions before I give you the news about where else you can find me this week and all of those kind of things. Uh, ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba Lots of people saying that that uh, information about signing work um, and dating it and all of those kind of things is either interesting or informative, all of those kind of things. Um, Anne is saying she's come across those sites which rip off genuine crafters. Yeah, they're awful, aren't they? And we try very hard to shut them down, but they pop up faster than we can do, I think. So we just try to uh, kind of head them off at the pass. Um, I know that there's lots of people that go, oh, you should be flattered that they're ripping off your work. No, I'm just angry that people rip off my work. It has happened to me and it, it's not nice. Um, lots of people saying uh, that uh, the um, they're really enjoying the painting. Brenda makes a good point that I haven't got to the bottom of it yet. Will you be making prints of this one? Maybe those who don't win a bid could buy a print. Yes, I had to finish it before I could obviously make prints available. I am actually thinking about uh, making greetings cards of it available with the proceeds of that going to Marie Curie as well. I can't make all of the proceeds of the cards or prints go to Marie Curie because obviously there's a cost involved, um, but I am looking into that, Brenda, I promise. I'll give you more information on it. Um, lots of people saying that they like the painting, um, all of that kind of stuff. Um, what other questions can I answer? So um, some people, yes, Val, you can change your bid if you were outbid. You can bid as many times as you like. Um, and the the poll, the, the thing about what is it that you'd like to see me paint next, that should be coming up on your screen just underneath where it is that I am broadcasting on. If you're on a tablet or a phone or something uh, different, it might be in a different place. If you're struggling to find that, I've given you four choices of things that you can choose for me to tackle next. I've said animal, landscape, architecture, or still life. So you can put it into the comments if you're struggling with the tech or over on the blog, you can say, Ali, could you please do X, Y, Z? Someone requested this daffodil 
and that's why I'm doing it. So you might just see me tackle your choice of subject next. Now it's a busy old week for me this week. I've had, I uh, did a live broadcast for Artist Demo Days yesterday because it's my spotlight uh, week on Artist Demo Days. We are sharing uh, a sketchbook project, how to make your own sketchbook. And the first part of that project is being broadcast at 12 o'clock today on the Artist Demo Days page. So you just need to be over there. It's pre-recorded, but I will be there in the chat. Um, so you've got that going on. I'm just looking at my list. Um, the other thing that you've got going on is the Artist Demo Days team. Five out of the six of the Artist Demo Days team will be broadcasting a special event over the Easter weekend with demonstrations all around the title Let's Celebrate because it will be a year to the day since our Artist Demo Days Facebook page was launched. Um, do go over to the page and have a look. I am on Saturday the 3rd at 2 o'clock. We're sadly missing Jeremy because he's uh, moving house, but the other five of us will be there. And then last little bit, last little bit of information. I'm back on Hashanda on the 16th of April. I don't know what time my shows are yet. Keep an eye on social media. But what I can promise you, because I heard yesterday, is that it will be two products that I have never demonstrated on Hashanda before. And I don't think one of them has ever been seen on Hashanda before. So I'm going to leave that little teaser with you. Thank you very much uh, for joining me over the last four weeks. We're going to start again. So if daffodils or flowers really weren't your thing and you'd like to see something different, we're going to start a project again next Tuesday at 10 a.m. There's so much coming up for me in terms of classes and exhibitions and places that you can find me. There's going to be lots of news and ways that you can interact with what I do from all over the world. So until I see you next time or until we chat further, take lots of care, keep looking after each other and I will see you very soon. Bye lovely people.